Hi. <laughs> I'm freaking out, hey? There's so many people here. But luckily, they're familiar faces. Hello? Khanu? Um, thanks, guys. This is amazing. Okay, let me start. Okay, um, I just have a... It's very short. Please laugh. <laughs> like, really, please. I like to laugh. So if you laugh, then I feel better, then I'm calmer, because I'm rambling now, because I'm nervous. So you need to laugh. Okay, so, thank you. Um, my birthday is on the 19th of August. La. And this year I received an email informing me that I'd be a recipient of the 2016 award for exceptional achievement and service by an SU alumnus. Initially, this was amazing news. I mean, the best birthday present ever. I mean, Thank you. <laughs> An entire award from my alma mater, so you can imagine how this made me feel. Um, but as a lawyer, I read the entire email to see if there was any fine print. <laughs> there was. That's why I'm standing here. At the bottom of the email was a request for me to deliver the keynote speech. At that time, I wasn't so sure anymore. I'm not much of a speaker, so you can understand how this is going for me now. Um, being honored like this, has always freaked me out. I'm never certain what to say and how to say it. I mean, what do you say? So when I never know what to say, I take it back to basics and I thank the people who've made this possible. Tonight, I'm glad to have one of my biggest supporters with me. The last time I saw this person was on my day of admission in February. And boy, was she excited to walk into that high court. You could swear that I was the only person who was being admitted as an attorney on that day. My mother's here with me, all the way from Limpopo. I hardly see her, so when she is around, you better believe I'm going to act like the little child that I am. <laughs> I'm very young, guys. Don't be fooled. Heels. <laughs> they do the most. <laughs> My other partner in crime is here with me tonight. The biggest contributor to this honor. The one person who looked at me and thought, wait a minute, I can actually build something with this person. Without her, I would probably be in a mental institution by now. We're at law school together. Oh, what's the bow? I'm sure everyone knows where that is. We stayed in the same race, attended the same classes, we did our articles at different law firms, and then madness got the better of us and we started a law firm with the help of other people. Marilai, thank you for wie is. Thank you that you have something to see. I don't know if I would like to you or what I would like to do. You know how many things are for us, and you know how I always say I have enough enough and enough enough. Thank you that you have my honor for the Thank you for all that you have done for me. But most of all, thank you for your understanding. So as you always say, together we are magic. I'd also like to thank my best friend Kim. She's not here. Who follows me on Instagram? Is there anyone who follows me on Instagram? <laughs> no one? No one? Okay, no, it's fine. If there's someone who follows me on Instagram, you're very shy to say it, it's fine. There's this girl who's always on my pics. Her name is Kim. She's my best friend. We have the craziest times together. But I want to thank her in her absence. She's not here with us tonight, but she's basically a friend who's become family. She's someone whom I consider my sister. She's the one person who has seen me grow from strength to strength, who has never made me feel like less of a person, even when I mess up big time, who has been with me since I was 13 years old. Her support and encouragement has also played a huge role in who I am today and it would be very wrong of me not to acknowledge her. The only person who can handle my nonsense. If I were the NSA, she would be Edward Snowden. So I really need to keep her happy, guys. That girl knows too much. <laughs> she knows a lot. <laughs> okay, so like I said, tonight I've been asked to speak about the challenges and opportunities that await students once they leave Stellenbosch University and to give a personal account of how my experience was since graduation 2013 till now. I honestly didn't know how to approach it at first, so I did some research. I asked most of my friends and former Stalys alumni about their post-university challenges. The reason I did this was because not all of us have the same struggles. That's just the truth of the matter. We all have our own highs and our own lows. What's funny is that at the end, it became like one of those, hello, my name is, and here are my struggles. It felt like we're at an AA meeting for <coughs> postgraduate challenges. <laughs> Stalys University is a great institution. The standard of teaching and the quality of education is something that's invaluable. 
Having had the opportunity to have studied under great lecturers is something that I'll forever be grateful for. The law faculty has been blessed with great, great lecturers. One of them is here tonight. <laughs> and then the next part, obviously, is my own personal experience. Um, this is very personal to me, so, but I'm sure a lot of us can relate. Um, my perspective is going to be from like a lawyer's perspective, but at the end of the day, we're all human. We have issues, we have things that bother us. Um, my varsity days were great. They included a little bit of everything, but because my mother's sitting here, I need to watch what I say. <laughs> I don't want what I say to have an influence on the goodies that I'm hoping to receive before she leaves tomorrow morning. <laughs> it didn't come without its challenges, though. There were years where I thought I was definitely going to fail. Years where I wondered whether I would be returning to study due to financial issues. Years where I wondered whether I was actually doing the right degree. Was law really for me? Then, there were relationships I built. Staying in res has obviously helped a great deal. Maybe being loud and talkative had a hand in it too. But seriously, there are tons of societies to join on campus that will help you build lifelong relationships. That's why I have my delay today, guys. And then came the part where I had to leave university. More than I was excited, I was nervous about finding a job, paying bills, and all the many other responsibilities that awaited me. I was never ready. I called the first chapter of my life after varsity, sink or swim. I struggled to find articles, which made me wonder whether struggling would be the trend of the rest of my journey. While in university, one doesn't really think much about articles. You know it needs to happen, but there isn't much preparation. Things such as vacation work are pretty important. Not only do you get to see how an actual firm operates, but you do get to apply the little theory that you have and see how things are actually done in practice. I only managed to secure my articles in October 2013, which was the last part of my final year. By that time, most of my friends had a plan. Some of them were even relocating to Joburg, and I was just sitting there thinking, was this law degree for nothing? I remember giving up and saying that there are many things I could do while searching for articles. I was over it, but my best friend Gordon, do you know Gordon? Who knows Gordon? You know Gordon. You know how loud he is, no? You know how busy he is. That's my best friend. <laughs> uh, my friend Lishokho Nolo Mkhorwani wasn't. He took it upon himself to find articles for me. He actually saw an ad in the Marty, and he took over. Like, guys, the Marty meant something to me that day. You know when you used to toss it? That day, I actually found value in Dimati, and I was like, yo, but for Dimati, but for Dimati, guys. He sent my CV, he monitored my emails, and even bought our train tickets on the day of the interview. Luckily, the interview was successful, and I secured my articles at that law firm. I call the second quarter of my life after varsity adulting. I bid farewell to the best four years of my life, and it wasn't easy. Adapting to this new reality where waking up for work was no longer an option was really tough. I did my articles at Walker's Inc. in Cape Town. These two years were challenging. Being fresh from varsity and having to understand how practice works was hard. First of all, your writing skills do not exist. They are not on par. There's writing and then there's legal writing. You do not get enough exposure to different types of laws and, and all those things that you think you'll learn. How you think you'd be like a company law boffin, no, it doesn't exist. Basically, you're not well prepared for articles at all. Just when you think you have the, end, the hang of it, your articles are over. Articles came and went. And then it was time to start looking for a new job. And now I call this chapter of my life the leap of faith. I was a legal mediator for all of two months. I didn't finish my probation period. To be honest, this wasn't my best time. The people were great, but the work was not speaking to me. I think it is very important to be passionate about what you do. My best friend, Gordon, who is now a law clerk at the Constitutional Court, always says this to me. Persistence, perfection, patience, power, and prioritizing your passion. These are the things that keep you sane. Not living out your passion has become such a huge problem in South Africa and around the world. In 2014, there was a tragic event with one of the Canada attorneys at one of the big five firms. The young man jumped into the atrium of the office, killing himself. This is an illustration of how disastrous being unhappy can make you. In most instances, the people who stay in positions and jobs and make them unhappy are those who have bad family situations. Knowing that there's a breadwinner and that there's some sort of monetary advantage is a huge relief to those families. The unfortunate thing is that it is survival that comes at a very high cost. I was one of those people. I remember calling my mother and telling her how unhappy I was. 
Because she's my mother, she is obligated to tell me the things that she thinks I need to hear. It's going to be okay, hang in there. God will never take you to places and place in situations that you cannot handle, blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. But at the same time, I wish you could have just called me out on my nonsense and told me things that I didn't want to hear. Telling me to woman up, see what I did there? Woman up. <laughs> to find other ways of fulfilling myself, to take risks, to create new challenges for myself, to try new things. A great opportunity came to me through Madeleine. We started our own firm with the help of three amazing partners. Guess who got the first call when that opportunity came? Guess, guys, it's a piece of like, guess. <laughs> not Gordon. <laughs> it's not Gordon. My mother. <laughs> my mother, again, she was in my corner. At first, I was very skeptical about it. I thought I was being punked. So I told her that I wasn't keen for it. Do you want to know what she said? No, like, really, do you want to know? <laughs> You're like, crap it. Um, she just called me out on my nonsense and told me things that I didn't want to hear. I warmed up, I took a risk. I created a new challenge for myself. I tried something new, I was motivated. That's why I'm standing in front of you tonight feeling like I've aged 100 years since May 2016. I don't know if you can tell, but my skin is also going for the most right now. <laughs> this is what happens to you eh? when you start taking risks. To be honest with you, finding work is hard. I think that this is the biggest challenge for us, like, to date. When you have to sell your company to someone and convince them that you're the person for the job, you actually miss the days when you're an employee. Now people will look at how old your firm is, like we turned three months old on the 8th of October, but that's exciting, <laughs> we're getting there. They look at your experience, Madeleine and I are just 25, well she's turning 25 on the 3rd of December, don't forget, 3rd of December is her birthday. And then of course our gender. Being two young female Ebon and Ivory partners is a shock to most people's systems. I say this because even my black friends always ask me how we get along. I always tell them that that's not important. It's actually relevant. What's important is that we get the job done. We respect each other. But most importantly, we have a friendship that we both value above anything. Patriarchy is a reality, especially in the legal profession. The law profession is still dominated by white, white cisgendered men who believe that things are the way they are because they have to be, that they've always been that way and that there's no alternative and they will never change. And now a lot of people think that our issues only involve race. For me, as a black woman, it is intersectional. I have to deal with the fact that I'm undermined by all types of men because I'm a woman. I've had questions like, are you sure this is the right thing for you to do? Comments, you won't make it because you're a woman, you don't know business. And when it comes to my blackness, I've been told that I'm a BE candidate, so there's nothing extraordinary about me. But to all those people who said all oh, these things, I'm gonna quote one of my favorite people. Do what scandal? The fixer. <laughs> How to get away with murder? Yes, me too. And Grace. <laughs> Grace is also important, Shonda Rhimes. Um, and some of you have probably heard this. Uh, but she always says, you, when one of her speeches, she went, you know what I am? I'm smart. I'm talented. I take advantage of the opportunities that come my way. And I work really, really hard. Don't call me lucky. Call me a badass. <laughs> um, with everything that I've just described, and I actually Googled it, and there's a term for it. It is called microaggression. I couldn't believe that there was actual, an actual word for it. It has been described as a situation where women are sexualized by their male colleagues, judged harshly by female colleagues, or subjected to standards different from men. As a young black woman, this is not a conducive envi environment for me to grow in. I need a supportive environment an environment where I'm not too opinionated, where I'm not too much woman. I need an environment where I can be me. This quote beautifully captures the state of a black woman. Here you are, black and woman, and in love with yourself. You are terrifying. They are terrified as they should be. I would la now like to address the woman in this room, young and old. Please do not underestimate the weight that your presence as woman adds to this world. The power you possess, your resilience, your strength, this in itself is political. To establish your presence in the world and accept your, ex your excellence in South Africa is to lay claim to a dimension of power that will assist in cementing your agency and allow you to pave the way for other women who will come after you, women who look to you and your examples and your experiences. 
As Professor, Professor Angela Davis, an American, African American civil rights activist and educator said, black women have had to develop a larger vision of our society than perhaps any other group. They have had to understand white men, white women, and black men. And they have had to understand themselves. When black women win victories, it is a boost for virtually every segment of society. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. First of all, thank you for laughing, and thank you for your time. <laughs>